one thing I want to talk about, and you've mentioned this, actually, you explained this really well on the ask a cycling coach podcast, one of the recent episodes that you were on, but can you explain what Olympic qualification requires? Like, what is that process like and how do you do it? Yeah. So there's the international Olympic committee and the UCI come up with a certain set of rules and it changes Olympics to Olympics. Um, but right now for Tokyo, it was, they take a two year cycle uh, separated into year one and year two, where they take the top three riders of every country that have had the most UCI points and add them up. And then they put you on a chart. And after the end, they combine cycle one, cycle two, add them up. And then they put the countries on a list. Um, and then depending on where you fall on that list, it means how many spots you get in order to have a spot, you need to be top 21 countries, you know, the first, in the second country, you get three spots, which this year, it was the first time that women were allowed to qualify three before you, the max you can have is two. So that was huge. And then three to eight was two riders. And then nine through 21 was one rider. So that qualifies you 21 nations. And then there's a few other ways that you can get in. So you have, there's certain continents that have uh, automatic ticket for nations that don't qualify in that top 21. So in the Americas, we have one, which, uh, Daniela Campusano received. So she was, uh, the first athlete from a non-qualified nation. So she gets to go. And I think there's one in Asia and there's one somewhere else, but I don't, don't really know where it is. Um, and then they take the top two riders from non-qualified nations at the world championships in 2019. And then they take the top two riders from the U23 category in the 2019 World Championships. And it's not necessarily the rider, it's the country that gets a quota. Got it. So, like, that's exactly how, like, Piddock was able to get in was because uh, one of the U23 riders was that second rider, so he qualified Great Britain in. Um, And then within that, so that's, like, how a country gets a spot. And then each country has their own selection criteria, on how they're going to pick which athletes get to go. Some have automatic qualifications. Other countries do not like Argentina does not have an automatic qualification. And it was explained to me because I asked about that this weekend. I was like, you know, it really sucks to know that I don't have an automatic way of qualifying. And the national team coach was like, Oh, we did that because ex Olympics, like I can't remember if it was Rio or London, you know, one of the guys met auto qualification and the other rider that was helping get points stopped racing because he was like, well, if he met auto, I can't go. So I'm going to make sure he doesn't go. So I'm not going to oh. get points, which is, I was like, Whoa, like I never thought that that could play a role into the qualification. So for Argentina, what they decided post pandemic was that they were going to look at three races and it was going to be Pan American championships in Puerto Rico, world cup number one and world cup number two. And it was best two out of three. So it was super simple, but it was really stressful because mechanicals happen, bad days happen. Um, there's certain things out of your control. Like if someone smashes into you, not much you can do. Muddy uh, races in Europe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's just, you know, it's kind of unfair because it's like, well, if I have really bad races and it's things that I cannot control, is it really fair that me believing I'm the fastest, I wouldn't get to go and there's nothing I could do about it. Um, so luckily I was the best in all three um, and was selected to go. But, you know, I think that part was a little bit stressful because I was like, well, it sucks knowing that I maybe would miss out on something just because of not politics, but just because this is the criteria and you know, you had a bad race sucks for you. Like you picked a bad day to have a bad race, you know? Yeah. I guess that's all part of it though. Like, you know, while I guess there is an element of like chaos and chance in racing, like it's really like the athletes that can manage that the best usually end up getting the best results. Right. So um, yeah, but even yeah. then, like, it definitely messed up with my head a little bit because I was like, I am so close to achieving a qualification that I never thought was possible. And with my luck, I'm bound to mess it up somehow, you know, or I'm bound <laughs> to like have politics play in. You know, I had a fellow country rider that 
a friend of mine told me that she was, you know, this was maybe 2018, 2019, that she was saying there's no way they're going to take Sophia because she doesn't live in Argentina. She doesn't deserve to go. And I was like, oh, my goodness, what if they do think like that? And what if they decide, like, nope, sorry, like, you're not going to go. You know, I have no idea how to argue or arbitrate that because we don't really have those rules. So it was, like, really, really stressful until I got my um, confirmation, which just came through a WhatsApp message, like, hey, congratulations on going to the Olympics. (laughs) Oh, wow, like, this is it? Like, you know, I thought I would get a message from the – olympic committee or something like that but it was, nope just a whatsapp message <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah so uh what was that like when you got that message because this is maybe even four years of riding on somebody else's trust or five years of riding on somebody else's trust and mm-hmm. hoping that that could be the case and kind of like uh you know i hope you're right sort of a thing what was the feeling like once you finally realized that that actually has been achieved that carmen was right It was like a sigh of relief, but it was mainly because after the World Cup number one, somehow somebody in Argentina made the assumption I had qualified. So the news was everywhere that I had qualified and I had requests for a bajillion interviews. And I was like, the criteria hasn't closed. And we're not even sure if we qual like until the UCI announces we have a spot it's not official and I haven't been told anything and no, the mess still happens. And then I fly back to my parents' house and, you know, they had a small like celebration for me. And I was like, I don't know. I haven't been told. So I was like very, very stressed because I just had this fear of somebody's going to do something and they're going to take this opportunity away sure. from me because I don't, you don't want to get your hopes up. Right. It's something that like would absolutely crush you if, if you did get your hopes up and it was taken. Mm hmm. Exactly. So I, yeah, I mean, once I got my text, I just, I was going to go get a burrito <laughs> for lunch and I got the text. So then I, uh, yeah, called Carmen right away and I was like, we did it. Like this crazy idea you had, like, you're not so crazy after all. Like, you know, we work here and, uh, you know, I'm excited. Um, but it definitely wasn't anything that ever filled me with joy either. Uh, Cause you know, a lot of athletes say the Olympics is a dream and I, you know, I've watched it since I was a little kid and I said, I want to be an Olympian or this and that. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, it was just a goal. It wasn't a dream and it wasn't, you know, it was something that definitely guided my life for the past four years and a lot of sacrifice that has gone into making this goal. Mm. But it wasn't like, I don't know. It didn't feel as awesome as I thought it would to get that confirmation. It was like, okay, we're going to Tokyo. Like, (laughs) what's next? You know, like, (laughs) you know, I think. And there's also the whole part of like, I want to be an Olympian. I wouldn't call myself an Olympian until after I finished the race. That was, I think, the other big part. Because I was like, well, I could crash in training. Of course, it was really technical. (laughs) I could DNF in the race. Like I want to finish that race and not get lapped and just like, no matter what happens, finish it and then call myself an Olympian, you know, not beforehand because anything can happen really. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it.